we're at that time of the month where well at least for me i low-key get kai fatigue which is crazy because i haven't really played i haven't grinded this year for after interstellar and stuff of course i grinded that from that point to now i haven't there's rank and everything i haven't really played as much as i did when i was going for it and so i guess you say it's my fault but, but it had me thinking it was like why does cod not die but why does it like sort of get stale at the same point every year coincidence i think not and why the cod cycle never fails it never fails every year even though i haven't been playing doesn't mean the game is bad i don't think this game, i don't think the game is bad obviously i haven't played ranked on I know they have a different experience because of hackers and stuff. These cheeks busting. But in my experience, the game's not bad. It's fun. I don't know. I just don't be wanting to play Call of Duty. Like it's like Call of Duty is crazy. Come in the game till I got brave. I'm running with lions. I'm gonna get it two ways. I'm like, show hey, you ain't going dodging. I'm in a different state, shawty. So if you don't know what the COD cycle is, COD cycle is a very simple cycle that occurs every Call of Duty release. So in November, we get the release of COD, right? Boom. Everybody's like, new game, new Call of Duty to play, let's grind. Woody woo, blah, blah, blah. Everybody grinds, November, December's cool. We get season one. Everything's chill. Everybody's still messing with the game. It's season one. January rolls around. It's still there. We Season two is coming around. Everybody's getting a little bit of hype. They throw something out. Yeah, let's season two. Let's go. February comes, which we're in now. February, March comes. And it's like, this game is trash. So then after everyone starts to sort of hate the game, March rolls around. The next phase, which is, oh, Modern Warfare 2 is better than this. And then May, we get the trailer. May, June-ish. We get the trailer and the beta release date. We play the beta. Oh, this cause about to be the next one. This cause about to be OC. You get right back to November and it sort of repeats itself every single year. And it's just like, why does it happen at the same? Like, it's, it literally follows this format. It's not like a different time for each guy. It's the same, around the same time things start to shift. So Charlie Intel put out this graph. And this low key would make me think about it too, because as of right in January, Call of Duty was the Modern Warfare 3 was the highest selling game. Everything, all platforms combined. And obviously, it's not really too much to compete right now. I mean, Tekken just came out recently in Suicide Squad. Those are the only two. And I know people have been playing heavy. Hell Divers has gotten some boom, but that's only on PlayStation and PC, I'm pretty sure. So, games that are across all platforms, Call of Duty, of course, is number one right now. But I was like, dang, that's pretty crazy. People have been trying to say the game's dying, player counts down, and all that, but that's just not true so this is what i was this is what interested me a little bit cod hq is ranked second right but cod hq has warzone mw2 and Modern Warfare 3 they put all that under the cod hq name so i'm like how many of those people are actually playing Modern Warfare 3 or are they just playing warzone or are they still back on Modern Warfare 2 i would like to know how that's broken up but i doubt we'll get that uh one of the reasons why i think the cod cycle never fails I really don't think it has anything to do with microtransactions, if we're being honest. I don't think people stop playing the game because they put skins. There's nothing pay to win on Call of Duty. Nothing is pay to win, as far as I know. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but as, as far as, to my knowledge, there's nothing pay to win on COD. You don't want skins, you don't have to buy skins. I don't buy skins. I bought the Battle Pass, but yeah, if you're on Xbox, you know, you get that Battle Pass, you can, you can get that right back, man, but anyways because there's no loot boxes like it used to be like back in advanced warfare with the the different tiers of the guns and stuff it leaked. Oh! oh i got it finally you really had to pay money to get the better guns like you got the free ones but a lot of people just was trying to pack i don't think the role microtransaction plays in the cod cycle is as big as people make it out to be in my opinion i think it's nostalgia i think people just want call of duty to be a certain way and that time is just over with like not even for call of duty but just for gaming in general like it's a whole different landscape in games right now Bro, i've been playing cod since cod 3. COD 3 was the first COD I ever played. I've played every COD since. I'm not even about to sit here and say, oh, I'm some. If I'm being realistic, I'm probably slightly above average. I do. I have the potential to be a very good player. I just don't play the game enough to get to that point. You feel what I'm saying? Like, to get to a very elite or very good Call of Duty player, you need to play, like, at some point, you have had to have played at least, I'm going to say, like, what? yeah, nah, six, seven plus hours a day. 
And that's not, I'm not doing that. I'm not on COD anymore. Everyone is trying to, I don't want to say go pro because that's not true. I don't think everyone's trying to go pro in games. But the skill level is just a lot higher because of the people who are playing these games. I guess you can say the information. When a game drops, of course, you have the best players that sort of figure out what works. And that information gets fed out. It's sort of like a never-ending cycle. I think people knock people for trying hard in games now. When before it used to be low key glorified, good, like, you know, you see a prestige master in the lobby, like, oh snap, somebody drops a nuke, you're like, oh, that's crazy. Now it's like they drop a nuke, bro, he's sweaty, bro, touch grass, this is, this dude doesn't get off the game. It's like, dang, like, when did this, I don't even remember when it shifted like this. There used to be sweat, there's always been sweats, but they were received, it was like, dang, he's a good player, let me add him. Dudes can't enjoy the game anymore, it's like, I want every game to be casual, low key. And it's like, that's just not the case. People aren't going to get on a game and not try to win. That doesn't make sense. It's, you're not as good as them. So you want them to not try so you don't feel like you're bad at the game. That doesn't, that makes zero sense, bro. You're losing, it's cool. Quit the game, bro. Go on about your day. But they, now it's like they lose their sweat. He's hacking, proneness. Everything goes down the list except for he was better than me. It's that simple. Sometimes it's that simple. They were better than me. Now it's like, nah, something's got, there's no way I'm this bad. It's got to be a reason why they were, they were beating me so much in this, in this match. So I want to talk about leaks, because I feel like this is a big part as to why the COD cycle never fails too. We get information on the new Call of Duty a lot faster than we used to, it feels like. Of course, this is with social media and stuff now. Before, like, you would get rumors and stuff, but no one really ever knew. The May, June area is like, all right, this is the next COD, let's drop the trailer. And now it's like, we already know what the next two CODs are. The next one is go with the Gulf War, and then a sequel to Black Ops 2 directly after that. This Call of Duty is only in its third season. We already know the next two CODs, that's crazy. To me, I don't, some people might not see it that way, but I think that's crazy. How do I already know what my next two Call of Duties are? I know the Call of Duty for this year and Call of Duty 2025. And this cause life cycle hasn't even ended yet. It barely, it just got to the halfway point. People that sort of have a bias towards Treyarch over Sledgehammer, Activision, you know what I'm saying? They're like, they see another, like, oh, we're getting zombies. Oh, this is Black House. Black House is never bad. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And it's like, now they're already, they're already focused on the next Call of Duty instead of just playing and seeing if the game they have in front they really like or not. Then let Golf War come out and it's not what we think it is, right? A few months in, then it's going to be, well, the next one is a Black Ops 2 sequel, so it's got to be good. And then it just restarts over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So yeah, that's the car cycle. That's how I feel. I don't know if it can be broken or if it ever will be broken. Let me know how y'all feel. I want to know how everyone feels about how y'all feel about the current COD situation. How y'all feel about Call of Duty as a game? Do you still play it as much? Do you want to play it as much? Like, do you, if it was better, would you play it as much? You wanted to try a different type of video. If, if you guys end up watching other videos on the channel, you'll see I don't just yap like this in every vid. This is like a new thing I wanted to try. So, I'm saying hopefully it catches a little wind and uh, you know, sparks a discussion or something. It's like, nah, but we guys enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Check out other vids, of course. I got some. I low key got some heat. That you know what I'm saying? I got some heat on here, so. I'll go check that out and that's it. See y'all later. Why would you wait? You know the day flying. Time is a bank, you never make deposits. Shining.